Hansi is also a co-author on this. This is um, work is presented is based also on some work uh, on a paper that we had published earlier this year um, that had uh, myself, Monsi, uh, Carmen Alonzo, um, Larry Jacobson, who's retired, and then Brian Hetchler on this. And uh, what happened was is Carmen and Monsi showed up at a meeting one time and said, you know, can you get an estimate of how much virus is inside a uh, in a swine barn after it's going through filters and stuff like that. And so I thought about it and I said, yeah, I think I can, I can do that. And so it took a, took a little while to get there, but we, we finally got the model to put together. Um, a couple of things is I'm an engineer, so my perspective and point of view on how I approach this kind of content is a little bit different than I find that the uh, veterinarians take, but that's, that's good. Um, and, I'm going to focus more on the results that we get from, from using the model rather than actually explaining how uh, an engineer puts the model together. Um, that is, can be found in our, in our paper with this. So, um, purpose of the, uh, the, the model and what it is basically is the spreadsheet model. And it's using uh, engineering principles for uh, doing the calculations that we do with this. And what we're estimating is uh, the in bar, uh, airborne virus concentration in uh, a barn that is filtered. Uh, we're using it for a negative pressure ventilation system. Though there are positive pressure barns out there nowadays, uh, and, but this one's based on negative pressure. We're filtering the inlets, and then we have unfiltered leaks or infiltration that's going on there. So that's what we're talking about. And we're going to find actually two things. We're going to find the virus concentration and then the amount of virus that flows through there. And what we've been doing with the, uh, using the model is to assess the impact of various factors, design factors, performance factors, uh, management things relative to this. So one of them is the ventilation rate that changes through the season. So the ventilation rate in the wintertime is a lot lower. Don't need as much. Summertime is much higher comparing that. Uh, one of the big factors that we're finding that's important is virus size distributions. And so we'll talk a little bit more about that. That has a role in what we think is going on there. Now we have different filter collection efficiencies and area or uh, area size of filters that we are, are working with. And then this barn leakage and infiltration level. And then the, again, the two outputs are the virus concentration in the barn and then the total virus flow through the barn, um, and we have it on a per minute basis. Now, this model does not give uh, an assessment of the risk, or it does not quantify the risk of that animals will become infected. This is just giving us concentrations and virus numbers as we flow through the building. So one of the things that uh, I was taught many years ago in giving presentations is give them the results early so that they can see if they agree with you. And if they don't, then they can pay attention to what's going on with it. So what do we find out? Well, our model uh, does indicate, as one would expect, and as we talked about earlier today, uh, filtering does um, decrease barn virus concentrations and the amount of virus that goes through. So they are uh, uh, effective doing that. What this model, again, does, it doesn't give an actual amount uh, uh, risk of infection, but it indicates the relative importance of the factors that we're going to play with, and we're going to play with a view, a few of them today. Um, the uh, One of the challenges is what's the outside virus concentration and their size distribution, and it does have an impact on what's going on there. So that's one of the inputs that we use, and we is, it has a role in, in what we're getting in the results that we're getting. Um, Filter collection efficiency. So we're going to be looking at MERV 8 plus uh, MERV 14 and then MERV 8 plus the MERV 16 in combination. And that will have an impact on what's going on uh, with our concentrations and flow through that. And then uh, if we uh, use the uh, MERV 8 plus MERV 16, that that one decreases the uh, effect of different um, size distributions. So you can see that kind of relationship. One of the things that uh, we were surprised, or I was surprised at, was that at lower ventilating rates, the barn virus concentration actually is higher. That did not make sense, but we'll show you why that came up later. Um, but at higher unfiltered uh, uh, infiltration rates, 
we would expect a higher virus concentration, so that came through as we would expect. Virus flows, the amount of virus per minute that's going through the barn is higher at higher ventilating rates and infiltration rates. And an engineering kind of thing that is of interest is the barn static pressure. Uh, if we can keep that lower, we'll have less, less virus concentration because we have less infiltration going on there. Okay, um, this one's sort of an obvious thing for anybody that's here. Uh, the importance of PERS, you know, can be spread through the air. Um, it's one of the me methods of disease transmission. And um, so whole barn filtering has become a practice in uh, some of the buildings, some of the sow barns, a uh, number of other kinds of barns. And then again, from uh, uh, constant concept of uh, engineering concept, we know that barns leak. Um, a person that wrote a uh, design, a ventilation design book a long time ago said, you know, barns leak and uh, so that's not going through, the air is not, uh, that's going through the leaks is not being filtered. And so the question is, is what kind of factors impact these concentrations and flows? So one of the things that we had, and my good fortune was that my uh, former colleague, uh, Larry Jacobson, had done uh, some measuring of infiltration in three different sound barns or rooms. They were new, they were empty. Uh, they went out with a fans unit that's used to measure flow rates through um, a chamber. You can see it in the lower right there. Um, uh, the fans unit put there on an exhaust vent for a fan room. And he measured um, static pressure and infiltration rates through there. It's like a fan door on a house, kind of the same kind of a test, if you're familiar with those. And measured uh, flow rates, infiltration rates from 0.2 to 1.3 air changes per hour at uh, 0 0.08 inches of static pressure up to uh, 0.3 to 2.2 air changes per hour, uh, 0.2 inches of static pressure. Now, uh, if you have an infiltration rate and a ventilation rate of one air change per hour, that's, that's about the minimum ventilation or it's, 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 a, it's a major role in ventilation rate. And so um, we are getting in that rate where the barn's leaking enough that uh, we're having an impact. So here's some of the data for those. There's diamonds and squares. The squares were the, a small gestation room of about 240. Uh, medium gestation room had the 3,000 pigs, and then the large one had 5,000. Um, down here in the, uh, is the, the large gestation room. That was a very, very tight building, and we... Uh, chose not to use that data for our analysis. Uh, the line on there then is a polynomial that best fits the data for the uh, 3000 sow. So that's the um, relationship we're gonna be using between static pressure and infiltration rate in the model as we go through this. Okay, model development. It's a steady state of model. Um, we didn't worry about changing ventilation rates per time or anything like that. We're reporting the virus concentrations in RNA copies per cubic meter. Um, that's the ones, that's how uh, it's been reported. That's how Monsi handles it. And so we did that same way. We did analysis at uh, three different size ranges of, of particles going through our filters, 0 0.1 to 1 micron, 1 to 3 microns, and then greater than 3 microns. We use these polynomial relationships, uh, the one you saw for the filter, or for the uh, infiltration there. We use another one for the fan curve and another one for the cooling pads and another one for the filters. And then I also used a heat relationship. This is an engineering thing that related the outside temperature to the inside temperature and the ventilation rate. So we accounted for the heat going on there. We assume that the air in the barn is well mixed. There is no short circuiting. And short circuiting is when fresh air comes in and goes zips out and doesn't pick up any of the pollutants and things like that. We had no exfiltration. And uh, for convenience, uh, we used uh, the ambient air con virus concentration. The air concentration outside is 100 RNA copies per cubic meter of air. Uh, we don't have a number for the ambient concentrations. And so um, we're, we're using that number. Then we used uh, three different size distributions in these categories, and we'll talk about those a little bit uh, later on. We had no virus generation or removal inside the barn, so it was just whatever came in, um, 
stayed there and then went out. Um, there probably was settling, but we didn't account for that. We didn't deal with that. The uh, ventilation system had um, was a negative pressure. We had filters on the inlets. Uh, unfiltered air comes through the infiltration, comes through the leaks. There's no exfiltration. So what came in in the uh, inlets plus what came in through the leaks equaled what went out the fan. That had the balance. And the other balance that an engineer uses in these kinds of things is a pressure balance. So the fan generates a pressure, and it has to equal the pressure that's lost going through the cooling pads, through the filters, through the inlets, and then any other ducts that we may uh, include with that. We used uh, a 3,000 sow uh, barn, because that's one of the data sets we had. We assumed 400 pounds per sow. Ventilating rates, 10, 20, and 40 CFM per sow. Infiltra uh, the interior temperatures were either 68 or 86 because that's the heat production data that I had. Uh, we found some new stuff that I should modify it with, but I haven't. I don't think it'll have a big impact. And when we find the corresponding outside temperatures that matches those ventilation rates and that interior temperature, it's 18 degrees Fahrenheit, 42 degrees Fahrenheit, and 55 degrees Fahrenheit. Filters per sow. Um, from industry input that we got, uh, half, a CF, uh, half, a, half a square foot uh, or a half a filter uh, per sow or 0.675. And then we had the two series, uh, MERV 8 plus MERV 14, MERV 8 plus MERV 16. I use a fan performance of 0.8, which says that the fans don't do as well as the best lab reports because of any monitoring we've done, we've never found them to do quite as well. Uh, with that. The uh, feedback we got from the feedback we got from uh, industry was that our, our leakage rate was pretty high, so we've been using uh, just a fraction of it, 0.15 and 0.5. And then here's our distributions. And this does have a big uh, role in our uh, in the kind of results and what we'll get there. Um, so the numbers that we have are 10, 10, 80 which means that we had uh, 10 copies per meter cubed in the range of 0.3 to 1 micron, 10 copies per meter cubed in the range of 1 to 3 microns, and then if greater than that, it was 80 copies per uh, meter cube. One that fits a little bit more of the work that uh, Carmen and uh, Monsi did was uh, 1, 2, and 97. And then we got some folks that said, hey, wait a minute, we think you know viruses are really, really small, and there's lots of viruses at that small size. You should try 80, 10, 10. So we've got all of those in there, and so we can play with that. And those are all inputs in the model and can be changed um, if you want to do that at some point in time. Our uh, coll overall collection efficiencies are given here. So the MERV-14 has uh, only collects at the very small, um, collects only about 24% of them, 76% goes zipping through, or collects 76 and 24 goes through. Um, collection efficiency at the 1 to 3, 0.94, 3 and to greater at 0.99. And then the MERV 16s are 0 0.97, 0 0.98, and 0.99. And we did some things without any filters, so um, to show the impact there. So. Here's some of the results that we get. Uh, we're going to go through a number of tables now. This one is just going to talk about the leakage rate and the infiltration CFM. So um, here we've got uh, two leak factors, 0.15 and 0.5, and then we change the ventilation rates to 10, 20, and 40, and 10, 20, and 40 again. Now the fans you probably aren't caring about, but as an engineer I care about how many fans you got running because that's an energy cost. And uh, as we'd expect, they go up. Static pressures are in the acceptable range uh, for uh, filtered barns. Total ventilation rates there are uh, comparable all the way across them, a little bit different because uh, some differences with fan situations. But as you see, the infiltration rates um, increase slightly as the uh, CFM goes up. But if you look at the percent leakage, that actually decreases. So what happens is, yes, the infiltration rate does increase as we increase the ventilation rate, but the ratio is such that the percentage drops. So it drops for the, the first three from 2.1 down to 0.7, 
And for that, the 50, uh, 0.5 leakage, it's 7.1 down to 2.5. So as the ventilating rate goes up, the infiltration rate goes up, but the percent leakage goes down. Now this is where you guys are more interested. Um, so this is with the um, 101080 that we used, loading. Again, same numbers as we had before. Leakage rates are still there. The virus concentrations in the barns then did decrease as um, the ventilating rate uh, increased. And again, that is because that percent leakage decreased. Those two are very well uh, correlated. I'll show you a graph of that later. Higher leakage rates, higher virus concentrations. And then when we look at the virus that's flowing through, you know, it's like, is it the concentration that in fact causes the infection? Or is it the total amount of virus that's going through there? Well, um, RNA copies per minute range from uh, 5,600 to uh, 14,950 at the leakage rate of 0.15, or all the way up to 10,000 uh, to uh, 20,000 at, uh, at the other rates. So we are moving uh, you know, a fair amount of things going on there. So virus concentration decreased as the ventilating re uh, rate increased, but the virus flow increased as the ventilation rate increased. Okay, um, so now let's uh, talk about no filtering. What happened do we get here? So this one's just uh, no filter at the top three lines, different ventilation rates, and um, so there's no leakage as far as we're concerned, and we're comparing that to the, uh, with one filtering setup. And you might say, well, wait a minute. Why is your virus concentration not 100? The outside concentration was 100. Why isn't the inside concentration? Well, that's because you're warming the air up. Warming up the air expands the air. The volume of the air increases, but the concentration numbers didn't change. It didn't, so they actually decrease a little bit. So that's what's going on there. But an unfiltered barn is moving, um, again, depending upon the ventilation rate, 106,000 to uh, 346,000, but if I put some filters on there, I can knock that down by a factor of 10 or more. And so, um, again, this was just a MERV 14 setup. The, um, if we take a look at the um, uh, different virus distributions, so again, second column there, virus distributions 10, 10, 80, so that's uh, 0.3 to 1 microns, 1 to 3 microns, and then greater than 3 microns. And the big thing that you see here is that uh, when we have the 80 microns, and we're using a MERV-14 here, um, or the 80 concentration at the 0.3 to 1 microns, we got well over 20,000 um, viruses per minute that are flowing through there, and our concentrations are in the range of 20. So we got a lot higher uh, doing that. Now, the, while there is a lot of virus at, viruses at that small level, most viruses end up collecting on other particulates. And so um, I'm not convinced that that's the best ratio to use, but uh, we can run that through here. Okay, different virus distributions, different filter efficiencies. So now this case is different than the other one. The other one was a MERV, if you go up in the upper right-hand corner, it was a MERV 8 and 14. This is a MERV 8 and 16. So now um, we are collecting about 97% of those very, very small particles, 0.3 to, to 1 micron. And now, if you take a look at that total virus and the virus concentrations with the MERV 16, they're very, very close to what was we were getting with um, uh, the other distributions. So. MERV-16 reduced the impact of the virus distribution and lowers those virus concentrations and flows. So it makes sense that uh, the model indicates that uh, use a very good if filter, um, you're going to uh, remove a lot more virus with it at these uh, infiltration rates that we were using. Okay, so this one we have no leaks. Um, so everything's going through the filters. And this shows you just how um, the compares the two different uh, levels of filtering that we've got there. So we've got the MERV 8 plus the 14s and then the 16s, different ventilation rates and different concentrations. And again, 
Uh, probably the biggest thing to observe is that the um, MER 14, when we got 80, 10, 10, we're in the 30 to 60 you know, co RNA copies per minute going through the barn. Uh, concentrations near 19, um, whereas again, if you drop it up to an 8, uh, MERV 16 system, uh, we're in concentrations down in the 1 to 2, 1 to maybe 2 and a half, and uh, virus flows in the 2,000 to 9,000 level. So if we take all of that numbers together and uh, compare that, we can see the uh, that uh, there is a relationship between percent infiltration and the copy concentrations in the barns. It's uh, not quite totally linear, but it's it's pretty close um, with that. And uh, so that really indicates the importance of infiltration rates on what's going on here. And again, for these three barns that we monitored, we had two that had a um, higher rates, as you can see, barn one and two. You know, 1.1 to 1.9 air changes up to 2.3. But barn three had a much, much, much better um, uh, reduced infiltration with that. So that's going to have a big impact on, on what's going through here. So again, what we found was filtering does, does uh, reduce virus concentrations and the amount of uh, virus going through the barn. The, uh, this is just relative importance of these factors. Um, if somebody wants a copy of the model, I'm willing to share it with you and help you get started running it. Um, but we do not tell you the risk factors. We don't know whether one level is going to cause you uh, infection levels or not. The uh, outdoor virus concentrations and the size distributions have an impact on what kind of performance the system is going to work with. But if you... Uh, have a very uh, high efficiency collection system, then this uh, virus concentration and distribution does not uh, is not as important. And then let's see, virus concentrations were higher at these lower ventilating rates because the percent of infiltration was higher, but uh, higher infil unfiltered uh, rates also uh, had more high higher virus concentrations. Okay, virus flows are higher when uh, both the virus ventilating rate and the infiltration rates are higher, and then we can manage the student. If you can manage static pressure, if we can reduce that, you're going to have less of an impact of the uh, virus, uh, of the leakage with it.